The book will not bless you until you study what's in it. It will not bless you when it's under your pillow. It's not going to bless you just because you carry it in your pocket. It will do nothing for you just because you're sitting on it. Somebody said, now therefore I stand on the word of God. No! You're not standing, you're falling already. Because that's not the way to stand on it. You get the thing inside, put it inside your heart and stand on that which you have put it inside your heart. That's the way to stand on the word of God. You don't put the Bible down and mount it and say I stand on the word of God. It's not the word of God when it's on paper. It works when it comes into the heart and goes out through the lips of a believer. St. John's Gospel. Then St. John's Gospel. Never assume that you know something. Take the book. See it for yourself. You know, there are people who say, well, it depends on the interpretation. Take the Bible. Why don't you look at it and find out what interpretation you're going to get? Are you there? Hallelujah. You know, we've been talking about anything is possible. Anything, just anything is possible. I can be anything, I can go anywhere, I can, I can get anything. Anything is possible. I can effect changes in my life. I can be as happy as I choose to be. As prosperous as I choose to be. As healthy as I choose to be. It's up to me. Somebody says, oh, it's not up to you, it's up to God. Uh-uh, it was up to God. Are you hearing me? Then he sent Jesus to bring me up where he is. And then he said, live in my name. So now it's up to me. I live in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. That's the greatest thing in the world. That I can live in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. I'm sure you're ready. You look like you're ready. Now, there's a foundation for our teaching that anything is possible. There's a reason for our believing. The Word of God is not history. There's some history in it, of course, and we know when it tells us history. We know when it gives us prophecy for the future. And we also know what is a present tense reality, a statement of fact. Hallelujah. I said anything is possible. All right, take your Bible now. Now, have you ever studied in the Word of God, or at least heard it, that Jesus Christ is the Word of God made flesh? Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So I said, open to 2 Corinthians. Hmm? Did I say Corinthians? I told you that before. That's the first thing I said. Then I said, go to St. John's Gospel. The two are correct. <laughs> All right. Okay, St. John first, chapter number one. I'm reading from verse number one. It says, in the beginning, oh, glory. In the beginning was the word. Now, when you open to Genesis, you don't have to go there, but Genesis chapter one and verse number one, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There's a reason for me telling you that. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Someone said, uh-huh, that means God had a beginning. No, you just missed something. He says, in the beginning, God created, which means God pre-existed the beginning. Because in the beginning, he was already there creating. You understand? So God, that's not talking about the beginning of God. He's talking about the beginning of the heavens and the earth. God pre-existed the beginning. 
How many of you understand that? Simple enough. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. So where was he? Remember? Now, maybe you should look at it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created. God created. So he was there. Can you see it now? He was there already. So that's not the beginning of God. God doesn't have a beginning. So now we come to St. John's Gospel chapter 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word. So does it mean that it is talking about the beginning of the Word? No. Remember this. He goes on to say, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, who was there in the beginning to create. All right, let's go on. Or in St. John's Gospel chapter number 1. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. All things were made by who? God. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him. Who? The Word. He says, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Look at verse 4. Read verse 4. Hallelujah. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Look at verse 5. And the light shined in darkness. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now look at verse 6 and never forget it. Read verse 6. Won't you go? Stop right there. There was a man, saint, from who? That's powerful. There are not too many people that that can be said of. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. I was talking about John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God. The people who say, no, God doesn't send anybody, he sends angels only. No, but there was a man sent from God. If he did then, he still does today. Because he has not changed. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. To bear witness of the light that men might believe. Praise God. All right. Now, you go down to verse 14. Read it together. One to go. Full of grace and truth. I like that. He says, and the word was made flesh. A better rendering says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and reality. Full of grace and reality. Amen. The word became flesh. The word became flesh. The Word became flesh. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. Amen. It's talking about Jesus, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And you look at verse 16. I want you to read verse 16. You'd like it. Want to go? That's powerful. Of His fullness. We have received of his fullness. You remember what Jesus said about himself? He said that the, as the father had life in himself, so had he given to the son to have life in himself. And now we have received of his fullness. The man is full of grace and reality. He says we have received of his fullness. Now I want you to check the tenses. Of his fullness have all we received. 
Hallelujah.